Israel Iran News Today Civilization will defeat barbarism in Gaza 1A U.S. student and voter opposition to U.S. Israeli slaughter Today's breaking news in New York City is enormous rallies at Columbia, New York, and New School against the Gaza slaughter. The protests have extended to Yale, Harvard, and other U.S. institutions. Columbia sealed their gates, barring students from classes, dorms, and cafeterias. They must stay with friends or sleep outside. Plastic tie cuffs held over 100 arrested people for hours. Harvard, Penn, and Columbia presidents' reluctance to address congressional allegations of anti-Semitic protests has infuriated students. One billboard on TV indicates what Republican pro-Israel Congresswoman Stefanik said, opposing Gazan massacre is anti-Semitic. These congressional hearings include legislators soliciting APAC funding to raise the Israeli flag. The biggest scandal since the McCarthy hearings in the 1950s that dismissed numerous actors, intellectuals, professors, and government employees was this one. All three university presidents apologized for letting students support the UN and ICJ. No one remarked, I'm glad that our students are standing up for what's fair and supporting the UN and international law. This illustrates how moral and determined students are to resisting unfair one-sided bombardment of a population as part of Zionist ethnic cleansing to fabricate a holocaust. Neither university president said this. Their cowardice indicated they prioritized endowment benefactors over pupils. The U.S.-Israeli war on Palestinians has harmed academic freedom. Columbia University halted all in-person classes today to prevent student rallies against the Gaza slaughter. Students are protesting the U.S. bombardment of civilian populations for the first time since the 1960s student protests against the Vietnam War and South African apartheid. The Democratic Party is upset that Biden may not win November. In the 1960s, President Lyndon Johnson had to sneak out a side door to avoid mobs asking, LBJ, LBJ, how many kids did you kill today? President Biden is experiencing that. From Israel to Ukraine, crowds shout, Bomber Joe has got to go. Younger voters abhor his war on the Palestinians and last Ukrainians. Many Americans refuse to vote Democratic or Republican. Leading third-party candidates Jill Stein and RFK Jr. are gaining momentum. Jill Stein is the sole anti-war candidate, which is surprising. Just as Zelensky has canceled elections and banned other parties in Ukraine, the Democratic Party is trying to keep her and other rivals off the ballot opposition to the Democrat and Republican neocon deep state risks of Biden-Trump impasse. If neither major party candidate receives over 50 percent of the vote, November's election will likely go to the House of Representatives. Third-party electors can negotiate arrangements, like European parliamentary states. APAC, a Zionist lobbying group, substantially funds this race. While they call Netanyahu and Israel critics anti-Semitic, he says Jewish liberals manufactured the public relations crisis. They oppose genocide. They're protesting on U.S. colleges. Colleges punish Gaza sympathizers like they seek to destroy Israel. Despite Zionist violence, the university president claimed Jewish students feel endangered. Israeli IDF students at Columbia have sprayed pro-Palestinian protesters with skunk, an indelible chemical. Columbia University did little to help attack students. Freud called this projection, Zionists project their slaughter of Palestinians and other Near Easterners Arabs, Persians, and others, onto their victims. Zionists argue that to criticize Israel is to be anti-Semitic against the majority of Jews who have been absorbed during the past 75 years. More than 50 years ago, anti-Semitism was unpopular. Netanyahu, Biden and Colombia's president claim supporting the UN and ICJ is anti-Semitic. If you oppose Gaza, 